Welcome to the DJE Podcast, where you will learn about real estate investing from real life examples. Here's your host, Devin Elder. Welcome to the show. Thanks for joining us today. My guest is Brian Lubin. He's a friend of mine up in Austin, Texas. Super high energy, young entrepreneur. And um, the episode was full of really good, actionable content and insights from his journey as a high performing corporate guy doing sales and knocking it out of the park there through to becoming an entrepreneur, traveling the world for a year and then now building his community and his company that he that he works on now. So that whole journey that he's been on, even though he's a young guy, is just kind of packed with insights. So I've made an intentional decision to get more into the entrepreneurial entrepreneurial world on the podcast because that's the stuff that I like to talk about and it fires me up. And so moving forward, we probably has, have less specific multifamily operators or things like that and more successful entrepreneurs, what makes them tick, what their journey was like. And Brian was a perfect guest in that, in that vein. So uh, super high energy guy, lots of good insight. His podcast is Action Academy that you can go find and link, you can see it below in the show notes too. So we'll have a word from our sponsor. If you can leave us a five-star review for the DJE podcast on Apple, that helps the reach of the show. Thank you for that. And we'll have a word from our sponsor and then jump into the episode with my friend, Brian Lubin. This episode is brought to you by DJE Texas Management Group, a San Antonio, Texas-based real estate investment firm with a track record of transacting on several hundred million dollars of multifamily land and industrial deals throughout Texas. DJE has been in business for over a decade and is approaching 100 team members in San Antonio. To learn more about DJE, visit djetexas.com or the link in the show notes of this episode. This episode is also brought to you by apartmenteducators.com, a complete ecosystem for professionals to learn how to find, finance, and operate large multifamily properties for profit. You can get started with a free mini course and learn more at apartmenteducators.com or visit the link in the notes. Brian, my man, the the myth and the legend here on the DJE podcast. I can hardly believe it. Pinching myself, um, podcast superstar, entrepreneur, retri- retired at twenty seven. I could go on and on, but how are you, man? Good to see you, dude. I'm doing good, man. I'm doing good. I, I wish I, I wish I was over there seeing seeing that beautiful studio of yours in person. But uh, I know, before, man. I got to go back to back to back today. So we're over here in Austin, Texas. It, it's hot. It's Texas. We're podcasting, dude. It, this it, Everything just falls into place, man. It's the most Texas thing we could be doing right now. Besides right, hopping man. in the helicopter to go grab some more barbecue. That was pretty Texas. That was a pretty Texas day, right? We both had our Tacovas on too. So yeah. I was wearing Luke Spons- Casey. Sponsor the like show. Sponsor, yeah, sponsor <laughs> by Tacovas. God, I can't believe the size of the checks that Tacovas writing to our podcast. Unbelievable. <laughs> Sensational. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Good stuff. So, Man, let's dive in. So, you know, we've talked recently on the show about kind of talking to more entrepreneurs, not necessarily multifamily operators. And I just love digging in and hearing entrepreneur story. You've got a really cool story about being real successful in the corporate world and then and then making that leap. And then now you have built a platform and a podcast and a business and everything around kind of shining that light on other people and helping other people do that. But Let's hear it, man. You know, what, what's, what's your background? Um, how'd you get into the working world? And then how did you get into the entrepreneurial world? I always, I always love talking to people that have had the, the guts to, to make that leap. Sure, man. So first and foremost, thank you for having me. And for guys that are listening, guys and gals that are listening that are used to the multifamily episodes, we're doing the same exact thing with my podcast. So my podcast is the Action Academy. We had Devin on here and we started with real estate and then we slowly started pivoting it, pivoting out to more entrepreneurship, business acquisition, stuff like that. So, you know, you, you grow and you pivot and we go through different seasons of life. So for all my multifamily guys and gals out there, sit tight. 
We're going to talk some macro concepts, some concepts that you guys can apply with your portfolios. So uh, just because that we're not actively investing in multifamily right now, we'll still talk about some concepts that you guys can hopefully take away nuggets. So we're not going to waste your time. We're going to earn every minute of it. So my name is Brian Lubin. Uh, as you guys can tell, I podcast myself. So I take this very seriously on this side of the mic as well. Uh, pretty traditional upbringing, college, corporate. Uh, that normal trajectory, I made it to the top of a Fortune 500 sales organization. It was slotted to become the next vice president of sales in the Southeast. Uh, rep of the year, rookie of the year, won all the awards, had a trophy case. And then one day I made it to the top of the mountain and I looked out over the horizon. I realized I had been climbing the wrong mountain. Uh-oh, hey. right? So who yep. can relate to that, right? In yep. our lives, in our businesses, sometimes in our marriages, you know, you're, you're like, who, who have I been with for the last 10 years here? Do I need to start from scratch? So that's essentially what I did is I, I took a good hard look around. I looked at my boss's boss. I did not want to be that guy. Um, I was like, okay, you do not have a life that I aspire to live. And your paycheck candidly is not that much more than mine. So I didn't leave a $60,000 a year job. I left a quarter million dollar a year job. Uh, so some people are like, oh, here's how I left my 40,000 a year job. No, it's a haul, <laughs> man, to leave something like that. And yeah. to put to leave six figures of you know equity vested stock on the table to leave bonuses on the table, but I did that. I made the big leap, and uh, so I did the next best traditional thing as anybody would do. I started investing in single family real estate myself. I uh, ended up starting up a podcast that accidentally became a business in my life's passion. Hopped on a one way flight, which is the next logical thing to do, and traveled full time around the world for eight months in 2022. Moved to Austin, Texas, and now I'm sitting here building up my media company. We'll hit 1.3 million ARR this year in its first year. My man, I love it. What a condensed version of that story. I'm sure you told it before, but I, I love it. Let's let's dive into the breaking point of the corporate uh, situation. Was this something that had built up over a long time? Did you wake up in the middle of the night with an epiphany and quit the next day? What what did that so that's a big moment, right? It's a big moment in your life. Sure. So it was the, you know, it was the climax of years and years and years of work, right? Of blood, yeah. sweat, and tears. You make it, it was my first, it was my first run in with getting everything you've ever wanted. So that's what a lot of people talk about on podcasts is big, hairy, audacious goals, right? And right. so I, I, man, I did everything that you could do. And what broke for me was a couple of financial situations through COVID where they didn't pay me an $80,000 bonus that was guaranteed. You know, you perform, you sell, you win. And then they just, after the fact, go back into their bylaws and say, hey, we just fired 20% of our workforce. We can't justify paying you 80,000. You know, life happens for us, not to us. But if that had not happened, I wouldn't have left. So it was a blessing, yeah. but man, did that, did, that, did that spiral me into a depression. Um, Imagine winning everything and you're slotted to go to this like uh, Costa Rica, you know, President's Club diamond level trip and have all the bells and whistles be paraded on stage and get all the hardware and uh, then get promotions and $80,000. And then they're just like, trips canceled. We're not going to pay you. And by the way, your team's behind for Q1. Hm. Oh, man. Insult to injury. Yeah. So I was just like, man, I've always been a number. And if I'm a number, and I'm the number eight guy out of 5,079, and I'm just a number, then this is never going to change. And so I started asking the question. I started asking bigger questions, man. I started asking, you know, I make a quarter million a year right now. How do I make 500? How do I make a million a year? How do I make more than a million a year? And the answer didn't exist within the corporate structure. So there's this funny story that kind of did it in for me where, you know, a CEO invites his top performer over for dinner, and he takes him out to the garage. He puts his arm around him, and he goes, Jimmy. He's like, you see this car? And he's like, dude, that's an awesome Ferrari. He's like, yeah, dude, if you work hard and do exactly as I tell you and bust your tail over a couple of decades, you'll be able to buy me another one of these bad boys. That's right. And you're like, we're not designed to be living in the same neighborhood as our CEO. So it was time for me to become the CEO. So that was kind of my breaking point uh, where I, I learned about financial freedom. I learned about equity and net worth. And uh, as good as I was at making money, I was good at spending it. So after that point is when I started, you know, hunkering down and bought my first couple of properties, very slow, very unsexy. But, you know, that's what the advice I tell people is in the beginning, you have to do the unsexy stuff to build the foundation on which to build the sexy stuff on top of. 
So much good stuff in there, man. Uh, I can absolutely relate to some of that. I remember doing the same exercise in my corporate situation, which is I've been out of for a while, but it was like uh, just running numbers, right? How do I 2X? How do I 5X? And you get to the 5X and the 10X and you're like, well, it's not here. Can't do it. That's for yeah, sure. Can't do it. <laughs> you know, can't do it. So that kind of, um, you know, it begs more, more questions. I think Elon Musk's quote is saying, it's not really the answers. It's asking the right questions. And I'm sure lots of other smart people have said that too, but it's the truth. You started asking the right questions and your brain, there's a lot going on. It'll, it'll find answers to basically anything that you query of it. Mm -hmm. I think most people just have the wrong questions teed up. Why does my life suck? Why does, you know, all these negative things, you're going to find answers to those questions. Guess what? Um, how do I 10 X my income? You put your brain on that. Your brain's going to start finding answers to it. Uh, and that might lead you to drastic life changes, but that's the, that's the idea. Um, yeah. And, and speaking of, speaking of asking the right question, right? So the question that I was asking, so here's something that everybody that's listening to this will be familiar with. I, I'm going to ballpark and say 50% of you are full-time real estate professionals. And 50% of you are maybe in a corporate job that are investing in real estate as an LP or trying to GP your first couple of deals. And you're trying to leave that job. So everyone's trying to leave this big job and big salary, maybe a hundred thousand plus salary in one fell swoop with passive income. Right. I think that that's misguided. And I don't believe that's the correct path because how I did it was I replaced my fixed expenses. So kind of as Dave Ramsey talks about the debt snowball, start with the smallest thing first, and then just keep paying off in full until you get to the larger debts. That's how I viewed my passive income journey, because for me to re to build $25,000 a month, which was my kind of my freedom number and passive in income, quote unquote, truly passive income, that would have required probably, you know, two to $5 million of invested income, sure. right? At minimum to be able to produce that as an LP or throughout my own deals. Yep. Um, so what I tell people is a, a question that I asked that I got asked that changed my life was, I was talking to a mindset coach that I had hired and I said, Hey, you know, I want to do this through multifamily. Ironically, that's what I said. I was like, I want to generate $25,000 a month through multifamily investing in five years. Like right now I've got a couple of co-living properties. I'm printing out 4,000. So how do we kind of five, five X this essentially over the next five years? And he asked two questions that completely changed my life. So Tony Robbins says the quality of your life is determined by the quality of questions that you ask. Like you just said. And so the questions were, uh, first off, why does it need to be passive income? That's the first question. Second question was, how do we do this in six months instead of five years? Love it. And so nobody had asked me, why does it need to be passive income before? Because we talk about passive income so much. Yeah. And Devin, as an operator, you know, you know that it's varying degrees of passivity. It's not truly, you know, black and white, binary, passive or active. It's nope. passivity. Only is so, it an LP. Other, if yeah, you're on the unless you're an LP. LP. Passive. <laughs> exactly. So we're we're on this hunt for the old, like the ever elusive passive income, the very sexy passive income. And I said, dude, you know what? Now that you say that, I don't want to just sit around and do nothing. Right. I'm like, dude, winners win, doers do, actors act. If you are a person that has the ability to go sit in the Greek islands indefinitely, you're not going to be the person that has the, <laughs> that it's not going to be able to, because your personality is that, and your identity is that of a person that wins because you're winning and able to get to that position. Right? So what I did is I was like, okay, how do I change the question? How do I generate this income? So I've got 4,000 coming in passively, pretty truly passively. So I'm like, What's this Delta? So $20,000 Delta, how do I generate $20,000 remotely working for and with people I know, like, and trust? And like, that's the question that I changed. And then he asked, how do I do it in six months? And I said, hell if I know, but we'll figure it out. And so we wrote it all down. And that was the journey that we began pursuing. Those are the questions that we began asking. And that that has now since turned into what I call passionate income. So passive income earns you the ability to do passionate income. So what happens on the other side of financial freedom is you've got your expenses covered, your Maslow hierarchy of needs is taken care of. What are you going to do with your time? How can you build a business around what you truly love to do? And so long story short, I started up a podcast 
believe it or not, of all things that I've forecasted, that was the last thing that I could have forecasted was making a business around a podcast. I started it up for free and just was making content. And I was talking about GoBundance, the group that you and I are both in. Um, I talked about the coaches I was using and people were signing up for them left and right. And I had no idea about this until uh, Chris Ryan, the CEO at the time, reached out to me and he was like, dude, we had like six people join GoBundance from your podcast this month. And he's like, you want to be an affiliate or something? I said, absolutely. And sure. before I knew it, I was making fifteen, twenty thousand dollars as an affiliate on top of the real estate. Come on, Are you kidding me? It, yeah, and yeah. So then that's when I, I did that three months consecutive to make sure it was real, and uh, saved up six months of an emergency fund of all my livable expenses. And then that's when I hopped on a one way flight and I lived in Greece uh, that July, the entire month, and traveled full time for the next eight. Man, that's that's awesome. I love it. Yeah. So you you've had lots of endeavors, and the podcast was just like, hey, let's do it. People are doing it. Um, maybe another channel here for the business, but you didn't didn't anticipate it being nope. what it turned into. Nope, just did it for free. Yep. And you know, a, a good life lesson in that that applies to business, that applies to anyone listening is, you know, I had all the all the stuff, right? I had the imposter syndrome. Why me? Who's gonna sure. listen to another business entrepreneurship podcast? You know like who's going to care and it, mike ayala uh, i was golfing with him and he's another buddy of ours and he goes huh he goes that's the most selfish thing i've ever heard i was like what selfish he goes yeah so you're letting your own ego deny other people access to information just because of how you perceive it may make you feel i was oh, like I freaking love mike ayala man that guy i was like "Ooh, wow so people listening, what is your ego getting in the way of, of you helping society? You know, do you think you're unqualified to do this or to start the podcast or to make the video, to write the blog post, to invest in that deal? Like, is it just your own ego or are you just being selfish, man or lady? Like, come on now. Like, so that was a life defining statement for me. And I said, okay, cool. I'm going to go make the podcast. And that's what I did. Man, I love it. And there's something, it's so bizarre. I've seen it so many times that just hearing it from another person, you know, out of their mouth into your ears, it might be something you already know is true or whatever, but it's super powerful, powerful, just hearing it from another person, especially somebody that you respect or look up to, but really almost anybody. And I think that's why you and I both know that, that the, the tribe you're in, the coaches you have, the people that you're surrounding yourself with are just like absolutely pivotal um, to, you know, to pursue any kind of success, but, uh, what a cool thing for Mike to stay and get kind of take to heart. And then most importantly, take action on and, and, and go out and do. So tell me about the podcast, just kind of some high level numbers. How long have you been doing it? How few posting, you know, how long has it been around? Cause you're, you're super into it. We publish once a week, you're publishing mm -hmm. more than that. And, uh, I, I love seeing it, man. Yeah. So we do five days a week. Uh, we do every day. And we've been doing it for a year and a half. And I'm intentional with the language of we, because that's everything that I do now I, is, uh, is a we do. And if it, even if it's still just me doing it, I purposely am intentional about saying we do it. It's our right. brand. We do this. Because yep. the biggest dilemma that I've had, that I've, I've had to overcome of the last year of you know full-time entrepreneurships, transitioning from a w 2 -er to an entrepreneur, right? is learning to go from I do to we do, and then to eventually they do, which is an earned you know, transition. So yeah. we're so myopically focused on just the I do, I do, I do. I grind, I work harder, I make more money. Now it's all I, fo all I focus on and all I think about is building team. How do I do this with a team? How do I build my company with a team? Like, who's the operator that I need to partner with? I don't ask how to do things anymore. I ask who. So yes, book, awesome book, Ben Hardy, Dan Sullivan, who, not how it, it's the Bible. And so that's what I run my entire life off of right now. And I tell people all the time. So it's like in our community, we have a back end community attached to the, to the podcast, which I'm equally as passionate about. And our entire business model is we sell, we give you all the information you could ever need for free. Every bit of the best information we just give away on the podcast for free. Yep. And yep. we sell the implementation. Because information was never the answer. If it was, we'd all be billionaires with six-pack apps. <laughs> so it's the implementation. It's the community. It's the emotional support. It's, you know, when you're having a panic attack after leaving your job, 
and you're questioning, are you doing the right thing? And you have to go to the hospital three times separately, like I did. Uh, and like having that voice on the other end of the phone saying, hey, I did this 20 years ago. You're going to be OK, dude. Right. Like that's where community comes in. So when we're talking about purely ROI. You know, how many people that are listening to this have 20,000, 30,000, $10,000? And you're asking the question, what's the best investment of this $10,000 or this $20,000? And trying to find that piece of property or piece of dirt to put it in. If you got like 10, that, if so I was talking to somebody with $10,000, I'd say, man, spend half of that on like a coach or learning an income producing skill or a community. Like you need to be around the people because people are going to be the best return on investment bar none in your entire life to varying degrees. It's exponential. Yeah, absolutely. I think, I think spending money on, uh, on yourself and your knowledge, your network is probably the best money you can spend to a point. Certainly it's been the case for, for me. It's, it's something that I've seen. We're just, we're, we are group animals. We just mimic the herd or the tribe that we're in good, bad, or indifferent. Um, it's, it's almost like an automatic thing or that happens by osmosis. I remember I used to think I'm going to this conference, or I'm going to this mastermind, what's the ROI going to be on it. And then I just realized over time that you couldn't play that per event thing, but for sure, just getting around it, th this osmosis thing would happen, getting around the right people or trying to be the dumbest guy in the room over and over and over again, over a period of years. And then you look around and you're like, Oh, wow, man, I, I morphed into these guys that i been hanging around with um it was yeah. very intentional at first but like felt like a huge imposter kept showing up kept hanging around with them and and hey what do you know you know i'm, I'm turning into one of these guys and so i mean that happens in any kind of peer group whether it's uh, business or um you know stealing cars or, or whatever you just kind of <laughs> mimic your yeah. Peer group. yeah and it, it's it's crazy because i think that we finally cracked the code to you know how do you achieve this new identity right so yes. you know you 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 have different seasons of life you wear different hats and when it comes to that of identity i think that the answer that i found personally that works best for me is you well the inverse is people get stuck in analysis paralysis right so people wait for uh confidence to take action so they'll read the books they'll study the stuff they'll shout out the mentor they'll do all this stuff and then they'll get so overwhelmed with all this information that they'll be paralyzed and then they don't actually take the action because they're still waiting for that surge of confidence to make the movement. Um, but the reality is like the action is what yields the confidence. So that is what builds it. So how do you become a confident cold caller? You make a thousand phone calls. How do you become a confident underwriter? You underwrite a thousand deals, right? Like how do you get confident in front of a seller? You sit in front of a seller a thousand times. Like it's it's the small repetitive actions that builds the confidence. So therefore, based off of that theory, I was like, all I simply have to do is just, if I want to be worth $100 million or $50 million or $10 million, I just need to be in the room with those people. And I need to see what actions those guys and girls are taking. And then I simply have to do those actions. And I know there is no more, there's no emotion in between. There's no delta. Like it's fact. Like these are the actions that this person's taken. This is these are the things that this person's doing. Therefore, if I do those things, then that will build me the same confidence that that person has. And so that's served me really, really, really well so far in my life. And that's why I run my podcast, and my business differently because the average person I'm interviewing on the show daily is between five to five hundred million net worth. And right. you know the sweet spot's kind of twenty to fifty million is the normal guy and girl I'm talking to. And I've had a couple billionaires. But that's who's in my ear every single day. So that's why I'm able to think of things bigger just because, you know, you stand on the shoulders of giants and the same applies in the inverse. If you're the biggest fish in the pond, you know, A, you're going to get cocky. You're going to get your ego um, because you don't have anyone to compare yourself with. And B, you're going to move slower. So, you know, it's very easy to stay humble no matter what level you're at. If you're in a room and you're the smallest person in the room, you're making a million bucks a year. If you're with somebody making 10, it's easy to stay humble. Yeah, it sure is right. There's always, it's, it's all, there's all just levels. It's all just levels. So um, always another level, but yeah, that's absolute truth. I want to talk, Brian, a little bit about an interesting, um, the transition that you've made, you know, the, the corporate situation, which I like what you said about winners winning earlier. 
you know, you're successful as an entrepreneur, but hey, you were successful in a job too. It's not like you were barely scraping by that job and then you jump out to entrepreneurship and boom, you're successful. You, you know, you, there's just traits that you have in you that have made you successful in both worlds, but very different scenario going from the W2. And then you had this kind of massive amount of freedom. And then now you're back at it, right? Because you, you do want to work. You, you didn't want to sit around and watch TV all day, right? With any amount of money. So what does your day look like now? And what was that transition like? Did you really need that, you know, full kind of almost year of, of traveling to kind of transform to where you are now? Or what was that, what was that transition period like to where now you're, Hey, you're, you're, you're sculpting the day exactly as you want it versus before you didn't have control of your time. God, dude, it was a bitch. <laughs> I'll tell you, man, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was, yeah. it was rough. Um, it was the most difficult thing I've ever done in my life. Uh, <laughs> transitioning. Yeah. So, you know, I'm in the process of writing a book right now and looking back, you know, you have to, first thing is we need to give ourselves some grace as entrepreneurs, right? Thank you. Right. Because it's like, look back on your life. Candidly, you know, you start kindergarten, you go through elementary, middle, high school, college, you go into corporate America, you're running your entire life up until this given point off of somebody else's calendar. Yep. And yet we go off on our own and then we expect to have that muscle built. And we're like, we want to be the productivity machines where we're cold plunging at 5 a.m. And we're doing everything exactly perfectly. And we're drinking our athletic greens and throwing our covas and then just, just brand sponsorship plans, <laughs> man. And so it's just like, we don't know how to do it. We haven't built that muscle yet. It's a muscle that needs to be built. Just like leadership, hiring, delegation. These are all muscles that I'm building one by one, skill sets. So you have to give yourself some grace. So today, what my calendar looks like um, every single day is very intentional. So first and foremost, like I have a extraordinarily high degree of freedom that most people don't have. A, I, you know, am, am single with no kids at 28. So that also is a factor. But, you know, I also know people like I just interviewed Jim Shields on my on my podcast yesterday that wrote family board meeting and he has his life kind of set up similarly. So it's not an excuse if you have children that you can't set it up. It's just about intention. Yes. Um, so I am in Austin, Texas right now. I'm popping over to Europe for the month of July. Uh, I'm going to go to Spain for a bit. I'm going to go do Yacht Week in Croatia, which has been one of my dream bucket list items for years. And then I'm going to go. I think to Montenegro or maybe over to Lake Como and just relax for a couple of weeks after that. And then I'll come home whenever I feel like it. So a day looks like for me, um, no calls before 1 p.m. Um, so from 6 a.m. when I wake up till 1 p.m. is the gym and it's creative work. So right now that looks like writing my book, uh, 2,500 to 3,000 words a day. Uh, besides that, it looks like making podcasts, editing podcasts, working with my team, working on vision, uh, meeting with my team at about 11 o'clock or noon and saying, okay, here's everything that I thought about today. Here's what I want to get done. And I can send it to my team. And then the afternoon is all my calls. So it's going to be people asking about the podcast or me doing interviews like this, or, you know, people that are, I'm doing intro calls for my community. So that's what my day looks like. And so I know people that are worth a hundred million dollars that couldn't have a fraction of the freedom. So it's like, I'm very intentional with, I'm like, I don't want to build myself less freedom with more money. That's not why I use money. Like I use money as a tool to earn my freedom. So you asked about the transition period and that's really important because another core concept that I like to talk about is uh, navigation versus acceleration. So we have a tendency with our personality types to mash this gas, like mash the gas on our cars and just drive down this endless highway. So you know, we've got like this entrepreneurial car dealership, which is just about every podcast, YouTube video, whatever have you. It's just which car do you want to pick? It's like, do you want to do multifamily, commercial, industrial, flex space, Airbnb, co-living, um, venture capital, like whatever have you pick whatever vehicle to get you to whatever destination. None of us ever take time to de find the destination. So what happens is you get in your car and you're just driving down this endless highway until all of a sudden your engine breaks down and you've got smoke coming up and you wonder what the hell happened. And then that your car's broken down and that's that manifests as, you know, depression over like sickness, obesity, divorce sometimes. And we all wonder what the hell happened. It's because we never knew where we were going. So what I did that was the correct thing to do uh, through the struggle that made it all worth it was you start with a vision. So the book Vivid Vision by Cameron Harold is one I always recommend. 
And I yep. religiously write out my vision over and over and over again every three years. I write a personal one and a business one. The vivid vision is you get into a time machine and you're looking at your business uh, three years in the future. How does it act? How does it operate? How does it feel? How does it seem? And you write it all in present tense as if, as if it's happening today. And I'm looking back on my vivid vision from 2020 <laughs> that I wrote in my cubicle at my corporate job. And I pulled off everything a year and a half early. So now it's just borrowed time. So now I've blown past it. And it was really cool to look back on that because I haven't looked at it in a, over a year or two. And it was really cool to dig that up and see that. And I was just like, even in the vision, it said December 1st, 2023, uh, my 29th birthday, I am now planning my escape from in my exit from corporate America. I'm going to go do a one year trip around the world in 2024. I'm gearing up to go do this trip. And I'm like, dude, I just did that in 2022. So what happens is I accomplished the vision, right? And I did everything. So it was another one of those mountaintop moments. It was the right mountain this time. But right. here's what happens whenever you get everything you ever wanted. On the other side, there's a valley. So I'm traveling and I'm kind of going into a depression because now I'm like, my entire identity was built around being a high performing sales rep. And I thought that that was going to be my life forever. Yep. And I don't know what I'm going to do next. And I have no idea what my purpose is or who I am anymore outside of this job. I was like, do I want to be a travel influencer? I was like, no, I don't want to do that. And for the life of me, I couldn't figure it out because I kept mashing the gas to that car that I was in and I didn't have a new destination yet. So what I had to do is I had to pull over to the side of the road and just sit. So that's what I did for about two months while I was traveling is I, I sat still and I stopped the doing and I started being, and I had to like actually accept that and slow down enough to get like the downloads of what was supposed to be next. Because if you guys think about it, whenever you go on vacation, that's when you get all your ideas when you slow down and not when you're speeding up or you're sprinting. So I slowed down and that's called period of navigation. So in navigation, you're, you're just slow and you're allowing all these ideas to come. That's where you're creating your vision. You're relaxing. Um, as one of our mutual friends, Tim Road says, get the goods in the woods, go out in the woods and hike like go ski, do whatever, and just be, and just exist. And then that's when your brain will start to formulate the new ideas and the new path. And then that's when you switch into your new season of acceleration. So I was in Brazil um, in Q4 of last year, and I was on the beach. And then finally, the idea hit me. I was like, I need to go from me to we. I was like, I left my job and did all this stuff. I want to help a million other people leave their jobs and do this stuff. And then that's where I was like, I need to make a business around that. I can't do that by myself. I need to build a team. I need to build infrastructure. I need to build vision for that. And I ran back to the hotel and I started working and I worked so hard over the next month that I didn't pick my head up. Like I barely slept that I just had to fly home. I was like, it's time to, it's time to get the, back to fucking work again. And that's what I did, man. Ever since then, I've been mashing the gas and now I'm eight months deep. And then we've materialized the seven figure business out of thin air. And now I'm like hunting towards eight figures in the next couple of years. And that's, that's the goal, man. So we're going to help a million people leave their jobs. So a lot of information there. I'm going to pause. <laughs> I love it, man. So much good stuff in there. I'm so glad you came on this, this podcast and there's so much stuff to, to get into there, but I think it's really important for people to hear. And I, I absolutely feel you. And I think my, my journey parallels yours in, in so many ways and so many of the peaks and valleys that go into that entrepreneurial journey and the, the loss of identity after losing a job is a, is a huge deal for those of you guys that are pushing yeah. hard to get out of your shoes is don't uh, beware of the void, right? It's, it's, it's real. And it's uh, I struggle with that big time. It was like this years of pressure to get out of the W2. That kind of became my identity. It was like, I'm the guy that hustles yeah. and burns a candle at both ends and is going to fucking make it happen. Right. And then you make it happen and you're like, okay, that's my whole identity. I was wrapped around that, that struggle's gone now. And like, who am I? And I, and I think if you don't have that piece lined up, it can get, it can get super scary. Um, so I appreciate you kind of acknowledging that. And then I really love how you're very intentional now about being really busy with, the, with the new mission by choice, right? You don't have to do this. You could do, you know, you can do whatever you want. Um, yeah. and I, I find that so fascinating that so many successful people, um, are pretty busy 
right? By choice. Yeah. Well, I'll try not to be like, it's like you try not to be busy just for the sake of being busy. Like I'm still working on that uh, because I feel you feel guilty if you're not working. Um, so I'm allowing a lot more margin in my life, which is why I don't do the calls. It's like from one of my coaches, um, I, I'm, I'm trying to allow for more margin, which is the time where I can slow down and work on the business, not in the business. Sure. So it's like everything that I do is advice from guys like you and everyone else that comes on the podcast 20 years in the future. And they're yeah. coming back to me and they're saying, dude, do this, do this, don't do this, don't do this. <laughs> right. It's like climbing Mount Everest. You got the Sherpa coming down that's been doing it for two decades. And they're like, okay, if you go to the left, you're going to freeze to death. If you go to the right, you're falling off the mountain. Follow me, buddy. Um, but a funny thing, I was doing research for the book. And did you know cheetahs can only sprint for 30 seconds? I've never heard that. That sounds crazy. Because they go like 70 miles an hour, right? 70 miles an hour, but they can only sprint for 30 seconds or they're going to die. Oh, my God. They got to make Fun a count fact. then. Fun fact, and there's a point behind this. So okay. whenever we see a picture of a cheetah, and this is me stress testing my, my part of my book, guys. So let's see how this lands, baby. <laughs> we all see these pictures of cheetah. Whenever you see a picture of a cheetah, they're sprinting, right? And Absolutely. that's all we think about when we think about a cheetah. It's just them running. But the cheetah only can run for 30 seconds. And then, and, or it will have hyperthermia. So for a cheetah to start sprinting, it needs to be within really close proximity of the gazelle because it knows that it only has that short short time window to be able to sprint full full speed and that's what it's designed to do but the cheetah 95 percent of the time is like they have actually really really good eyesight so they're they have eyesight like a hawk nobody talks about that but they can see the prey from a, a far distance away and then they spend most of their time kind of like stalking through the bush and like getting really close as close as they can to the gazelle and then that's when they use the ability their god-given ability to take down the gazelle so I parallel that to entrepreneurship. We see the Gary Vaynerchuks, we see the Grant Cardones. All we ever see is the hustle and the grind. We don't see, you know, the 95% of the time where they're, you know, looking at the prey in the distance, which is setting your vision, casting the overall, you know, mission of the company. And then you're like going through the weeds is us right now, dude. It's 2023. We're almost about to default on the national debt. We've got distress everywhere. And all of us, like anybody that's a cool operator is just like on the sidelines right now, just watching and we're waiting and we're seeing, you know, what's that opportunity that's about to pop up because there's a lot of people in distress and there's a lot of gazelles that are starting to wander into the field. So then at the very last second, when you have your, your vision set and you have your goals set at the very last second, that's when you go full speed. That's when you take down the gazelle. And then that's that sprint for us, maybe six months and maybe a year, maybe five years. But it's just like there's so much to the equation that we don't talk about. And so once I realized that, it gives you permission to not sprint all the time. Because you'll die. <laughs> I love it, man. How, how have I not read that in one of the you know thousands of books I've read over the years? Never knew because that. Because it's brand new. And if anybody steals that and re releases it before, I'm going to hunt you down, baby. And I'm not going to hunt you down like a cheetah. I'll use a gun. <laughs> <laughs> yes, no, nah, man, it's yeah. I do. I was like, let me look. I was like, how fast can a how far can a cheetah run? I looked at it. And I was like, oh, my God. I was like, entrepreneurship. <laughs> oh, man, that's perfect. I think that's going to land great in the book. And you're you're coming along at a good clip. When do you think you when do you think you publish the book? Six uh, December, fir either? December 1st. OK. It should be Are ready you? by my birthday. Yeah. So we've got, so right now to like, um, the, the book's already been done technically a couple of times because I made it in a course first and that's what like started the business. Uh, so the yep. business, my business, my mastermind started as a course. Um, well it started as yep. getting on the phone with a hundred people. Um, so that's where it all started was your MVP, your minimum viable product. First thing you got to do is talk to your customer. So Talked to 100 people that yep. were in their jobs trying to leave. What are your problems? What are you running into? Coach you for free. Um, made that into a course. Uh, and I emailed all the people that I coached for free. And I say, hey, guys, I'm making the thing. It's not ready yet. 1500 bucks. Is that good? And that was kind of the email. It was like four sentences. Made $100,000 in 48 hours through Venmo wow. and Cash App. Because wow. I didn't have a business set yet. Uh, then I was like, uh-oh, this is a business. And then created the business, created the LLC, made a Stripe account. and then transitioned everyone into a recurring revenue model, like the mastermind model, which is yep. far superior because it increases your multiple uh, as well. Um, yeah. So 
that's dude, it's funny how all that came to be and the entire time i'm just like it's just iteration after iteration after iteration and that that's what's so fun about business man i'm having a blast and i'm getting my ass kicked too it's so much fun i view it dude I view it whenever I have pain, like my bookkeeper right now is, um, is I think like she's in the hospital. I don't think she's going to be able to maintain, like be my bookkeeper anymore. Oh, wow. Um, so, you know, thoughts out to her, but you know, then all of a sudden you're like, Oh, who's running payroll and everything. And you're like, I don't know how to do that. And you got to figure out how to do that real quick. <laughs> Cause you know, your, your bookkeeper has gone. You know, I had like $40,000 that I lit on fire for marketing in Q1 that yielded nothing. And, you know, some people may hear that and they're like, that's a lot. Other people may hear that and they're like, oh, I spent $40,000 in mailers in December. So it's just all relative. It's all the same lesson. It just depends on what degree you learn it and how many times you have to keep learning it over and over again until you actually implement <laughs> and iterate. So Dude, I'm having a blast. This is the most fun I've ever had in my entire life. And I view it like, you know, being at the gym and like being uh, under the the squat rack and you got the weight on your back and it's really uncomfortable at times when you're going down, but then you become stronger. So I don't know. I enjoy business. Maybe I'm just weird. I love it, man. My older brother's been a, a lifelong entrepreneur and he, you know, he's got all these things he's taught me, but he said something a long time ago that stuck with me. He's like, there's, there's really no vehicle for personal development, like being a business owner, it just oh, no. read all this stuff and learn all this oh, stuff, no. like to go do it and to try to turn these ingredients into a profit consistently. It's like the ultimate personal. It's the most, it, dude, it, and we need to remember what the hell it is, dude. It's all a game. None of this yep. really matters in the macro. Right. Yep. So there's a quote that I heard, another quote that I freaking love, man. It's probably a quote that I'm going to take with me for the rest of my life, and that's. The best games worth playing aren't winnable. Love best it. games worth playing aren't winnable. So you can't yep. win the game of business. You can only hope to continue playing the game of business and stay in yep. business. You can't win marriage. You can only hope to remain playing the game of marriage and stay married. You can't win health. You got to only hope to remain healthy and keep playing that game. So it's like when you're choosing what games to play, Choose the ones that are the correct ones. If it's something that's winnable, it may not be the correct game to play. So that's what I kind of like the lens that I view every decision that I take on is I'm like, is this a game that I'm going to play for the rest of my life? And Naval Ravikant got, has another great quote, which is play long-term games with long-term people. And so I'm like, if I'm going to be playing any of these games for like a decade at minimum, it's like, dude, why would I not have fun with it? It's going to be difficult. Yeah. But like, let's have fun with it because that's what we're doing it for. Like, if you're not having fun in your business, why, why are you doing it? Go work for that? somebody else again. Yep. Yep. <laughs> I don't couldn't know. What are your thoughts? More. Yeah, no, couldn't agree more. Um, I like long-term gaze and long-term people. That's the, that's the move. And then you doing that, you see these compounding effects over time where um, all sorts of things get easier or the fish start jumping in the boat versus having a, go out there and work so hard. So definitely awesome long-term compounding effects there. Um, Brian, this oh, is yeah. killer stuff. I, I love having you on the podcast. Uh, somebody listening wants to go dial into your podcast, learn more about what you're doing. We're going to put it in the show notes. Where do we send those people? Yeah, you can check out uh, Action Academy podcast. Um, so we do five episodes a week. We had Devin on. We've had some really cool people on. We have Amy Porterfield on for marketing. We've had Jeff Hoffman, the billionaire founder of Priceline.com. Uh, just about every one of your favorite authors you could think of has been on the show and it's growing and growing. So if you want to learn, you know, how to leave your job and hit financial th freedom through real estate and business acquisition, check out the podcast. If you want to be held accountable to that same pursuit and you want to be around people that are moving, shaking and action taken, and you want to implement the lessons that you learn. So you're not just listening to podcast after podcast and podcast after book then Action Academy community is, is my mastermind behind it. But I would advise people to listen to the podcast a couple of episodes first, and then you'll be able to know after a couple of episodes if it would be a fit for you. And then you'll find the link through the show. So I would say check out the Action Academy podcast. Awesome. We'll link to it in the show notes. If you're listening, you can scroll down and click through and, and check out uh, Brian's podcast, the community, what he's built. A ton of good stuff here, man. And we're just scratching the surface. We could do this podcast for 10 hours, but um, 
we'll wrap it up here and we'll go get some uh we'll get, go get some barbecue in the helicopter sometime soon brother they say less and guys just so you know this is my energy like right now this is me this is me after like six hours of writing a book and you know going to the gym and everything this is my energy 24 7 i'm not even on yeah. caffeine right now so the, <laughs> it carries through true the story. podcast baby yeah true story i love thanks it. thanks for man. having me brian good seeing you brother we'll catch up soon thanks buddy Thank you for listening to the DJE podcast. For more information, please go to djetexas.com.